everybody welcome back uh, this is episode four uh, and in episode four we are actually going to talk about DAX or digital to analog converters specifically today I'm going to talk to you about the uh, benchmark DAC 3 that I have in my system uh, I've been using it for around two years and I'm still actually very fond of, of this DAC it's, it's very dynamic um, it's very natural uh, stereo image is very good uh, and the placement of the instruments in the whole uh, let's call it my listening space is very good uh, it's fully balanced uh, it accepts a usb of course uh, it also accepts sp diff inputs uh, and then of course optical inputs as well and then uh, what actually makes it also quite special is that it actually also accepts two analog inputs so um, you can actually use this unit as a uh, a pre-amplifier as well so it's not just a deck it's a pre-amplifier uh, and of course a fully balanced uh, a deck um, and then of course you can actually drive to headphones with it as well simultaneously so when you um, yeah, as fortunate as us uh, both myself and Teresa can then actually listen to the same uh, music at the same time but uh, in most uh, in most applications, I actually use it as the DAC, of course. So I run it uh, balanced to the uh, Genesis preamp, uh, and I just keep the uh, volume at a fixed level, and then we enjoy the music uh, through the rest of the system. And uh, we actually use the preamplifier, our Genesis valve preamplifier, to adjust the main volume in the system. So a little bit more about DACs. Yes, um, you actually have um, let's call it the single. Uh, uh, chip design that like they've used uh, inside the benchmark what I mean by that is they've used the Saber ESS uh, uh, chipset inside the DAC then uh, a very good and silent power supply and then also uh, a, a top-notch uh, pre-amplifier uh, stage at the back so all three of these components the power supply the actual digital to analog converter and the uh, analog stage uh, contributes towards um, a top-notch product like in the case of the benchmark um, so I know there's a lot of um, DACs out there that focus a lot of their attention on the digital to analog conversion part and then um, you know it's not to say that everybody can actually have or design a very good analog stage. So I just wanted to iterate again maybe that you know all three of these components the power supply the analog stage and the digital to analog converter stage need to work together to actually produce um, a very high performance DAC like in the case of, of the, the benchmark. Then uh, maybe some other DACs I had in my system um, was the uh, D DCS, um, also highly regarded DACs, uh, I had the DCS in my system and then uh, funny enough I also used the, the Elises um, and I'll share some pictures of the Elises with you. Uh, so originally I didn't uh, buy, bought the Elises uh, for its digital to analog converter capabilities, I wanted to capture or digitize some of my uh, vinyls or my lo long playing records um just to to record some of them and then play them back but i soon realized that um, uh, one is that the, it makes excellent uh, recordings uh, the releases uh, it captures those analog recordings in very high uh, definition and in very good uh, sonics um, but when i actually use it as a playback uh, source it also reproduced uh, the music exceptionally I soon realized that with the Elises I had something special. Currently I'm using the Elises um, more as just a, a, a playback or a transport uh, when I want to play uh, CDs uh, or Red Book CDs. Uh, and of course I have uh, a lot of content on its hard disk that I also listen to every now and then. Um, and that's basically it. I had a few other decks as well um, that I can maybe uh, list in, um, uh, in the video itself. Uh, and you're welcome to also engage with me if you um, are interested in, uh, in buying a DAC for your system. You can also uh, custom configure the actual unit for your system. So um, over and above the actual volume control, there is some uh, settings inside the unit uh, that you can actually uh, adjust to configure the output impedance and also the output level so that it can match your equipment so you can either use it in the studio or you it's also good for uh, domestic or commercial use that I'm, I'm doing at the moment perspective of what digital signal I, I, I feed it either USB optical SP diff uh, either if it was a PCM format uh, wave files um, mp3s uh, just all of these different uh, formats it uh, performed equally well um, uh, to such a degree that sometimes I couldn't really discern between uh, when it was a high quality mp3 and maybe a PCM file 
um, I really had to listen, uh, you know, quite carefully to um, to hear the difference. Um, but that's what I like about it. So for any type of uh, digital signal that you uh, feed it, it just produced excellent results. In general, I think it's got a very good reputation. Uh, there was there's quite a few reviews out there that if you like, you can go and actually uh, read up on some of these reviews. Uh, last year, it was actually joint um, product of the year. Uh, from Stereophile magazine, which um, you know uh, just points to the fact again that it's a, it's a very high performance deck. So regarding performance, uh, I think it's top notch for the actual money that you spend. Uh, and if you look at the actual competition out there, there's a lot of decks that actually cost a lot more than uh, the benchmark, but it can still hold its own against quite serious competition. Okay, guys, thank you. Yeah, this is then uh, us, uh, the audio couple for this week. Uh, we've discussed uh, decks. Uh, yeah, also a very important uh, component in the whole chain, you know, from um, speakers all the way up to DAC. Um, and the DAC is important, yes, uh, as any other component in the system. Uh, and I'm glad that I actually have such a high performance DAC uh, in the system and that I, uh, I really, um, when I auditioned it, I decided on this specific unit. Um, and maybe again, yes, um, I didn't really, it had excellent uh, specifications. Uh, but for me, it wasn't all about the specifications. It was more about the actual uh, performance in the system and the reproduction. And um, from the, the word go, it actually performed very well in my system and I was quite glad. Uh, and I just had to uh, tweak here and there, a small setting and that. But other ways than that, uh, very good. Um, maybe you'll ask, why do I have a, a solid state deck, but uh, everything else um, valve? realize that if I have valves uh, across the whole uh, chain, what I mean from if I have a, a, a valve based DAC and then a valve preamp and also a valve power amp, um, that the sound tends to be a bit soft and not as realistic as what you would get. Um, and that's why I decided on the benchmark DAC. And the reason be for that is, uh, is straightforward. First of all is the sound and then secondly is that um, um, it's very dynamic. Uh, and uh, I think the preamp and the valves actually benefit from having uh, that dynamics, uh, you know, fit to, to, to them. But that's us then, uh, guys. Yeah, thanks again for joining us. And Teresa, thank you for uh, being with me when we auditioned this deck. And you were also actually part of the decision to, uh, to, uh, to get this specific deck. And I'm so glad that you, together we could have decided on that. And that um, it actually still brings us a lot of joy. To listen to this deck and actually the system so it's not just about the deck i think it's the synergy between all the different components and um yeah but guys that's us then and thanks so much for joining us again uh, on this episode four uh, talking about decks uh, if you like our videos uh, please subscribe hit the bell for notifications and thanks again for making time to to look at our videos thanks guys and thanks for the support